Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. For this one, we're gonna do a Baroque inspired chocolate marbled cake that I decorated with some simple wafer paper ribbon roses. These are great for a beginner when it comes to wafer paper. So let's get going. First of all, we're gonna make our chocolate marble. Now I'm just using white chocolate chips. Now I have tried this with ganache with not very good results. They never want to set up on me, so this time I thought, I'm just going to just go ahead and use straight chocolate. And these are the colors I'm using. They are by Color Mill. These are wonderful. I This is my first time using them, and I thought they were great. And this is a little trick on how to put a hole, get your food coloring out without it getting all messy all over the place. Poke a hole in the top with that lid, that little knobby on the lid. Poke a hole, put your lid back on. Not as much can come out. It's pretty ingenious. <laughs> Not my idea, saw so somebody else do it. And to make these panels, I am just using strips of wood. These are about a quarter of an inch thick. Now, if you're doing this for a client, you might wanna go ahead and wrap them with saran, some saran wrap to make them more food safe. But just make sure that they're not a treated wood. That's also an important thing to do. And I had measured the height of my cake, so I knew how big my piece of um, acetate needed to be and how tall it needed to be. And I just taped those pieces of wood on top. And with the coloring, I just put dots of color in it on the top, and I just marbled it through. Now I had two different things, containers of color, or of chocolate. The first one was thinned down with a little bit of vegetable oil, so that the pouring consistency was a little more even. And then the second one, I didn't add it, because I just put that over the back. Now once you have that done, just set it aside and let it cool, which won't take too long. And then I went ahead and I made these chocolate Baroque molds with the same chocolate. I marbled through a little bit more of the color and just poured them directly into the silicone mold. Now when you, these are really detailed molds um, and I just knew ahead of time, I knew that not every little scrolly piece was gonna come out. They're gonna break a little bit. You can use um, fondant if you want to avoid that, but I didn't think it was gonna matter too much once it was put on the cake. Your eye's not gonna go to all those little tiny, tiny details if you didn't know that they were there to begin with. So I didn't, I didn't stress out over it. And I put it in the refrigerator and chilled them until they were cool. And here I'm just scraping off the excess. Instead of worrying so much about getting them completely scraped smooth before I put them in the refrigerator, I know if there's a little film, I can go ahead and scrape it off before I remove them from the molds. Now gently pull these molds away from the chocolate to help prevent breakage. And now we're going to make our roses. This is just regular zero grade wafer paper and I'm making a wafer paper glue. I was asked for um, measurements on this and I didn't actually even measure this. Uh, my last video I had done a wafer paper glue and I just eyeball it. I just make sure that the water covers your wafer paper. Pop it in the microwave on 10 second in in um, inter bowls until the, it has dissolved into your water. Now I just cut a circle. Now you could cut these wavy, this wavy pattern in it while you're initially cutting it, but I want to make sure that I got the circle cut right and then went back in and cut those waves in. Now this is so simple. It's just a spiral cut down to the middle. That's all you do. Don't make it too many um, cuts in a spiral, otherwise your, your flower is going to get really small, unless that's what you want. Uh, but I wanted it more open and more, um, I wanted the edges to be more visible. And I'm just kind of pleating it as I go a little bit in the back to get a little movement. Now just set that aside and I did a bunch of these. Set it to the side and let them dry. It won't take long, maybe an hour. And then to make the centers, I just took an extra piece of wafer paper, added more of that wafer paper glue and just rolled it in the ball and let that set up too. And once all of the flowers are dry, I'm just using some petal dust to add some more, um, just more character to these roses. Just a little bit more depth. And I used just a yellow in the center. Then I went in with a little bit of green. No, I haven't done that yet. Uh, pink, yellow in the center, some pink. And then I do go in, here I am, adding a little green right around the center, just for a little bit more dimension. And you'll see that that pink kind of I focused on the edges of the wafer paper to kind of bring those out. It will grab onto those edges. And now here's our 
chocolate all ready to go and you saw me flip it over and that revealed the pattern. I did want a little bit more, um, more of a pattern but not in a gaudy way, but that's okay. We just go with it, we get what we get, we don't throw a fit, <laughs> and we work with it. And I'm just cutting these panels straight through the acetate, all the same size. I had measured the cake to make sure I got them right. And there I just sketched in the panels, the numbers, one, two, three, four. That way, when I put them on the cake, I know what order to put them back on. And I'm just using some buttercream to attach those to the cake. Now, these are chocolate. Now, you're not gonna necessarily be able to cut through these, but just make sure if you do this kind of a design that you put enough buttercream on the cake so when you pull those panels off before you cut them, each piece has enough buttercream. Problem solved. And then I just use some butter, that same buttercream. It's tinted the same color as um, the green part of this marbling. And I'm just piping it in to fill in those corners. And just smoothing them out. And then just put some buttercream on the top because there's a little bit of a gap between the top of the cake and the top of the chocolate and I just filled it in and smoothed it out. And for the chocolate Baroque pieces, I'm just using some more of that melted chocolate. Because to get chocolate to stick to chocolate, your best bet is to use more chocolate. Now I did the same design all the way around the cake. That way, it, no matter what side you're looking at it, you have that really cool Baroque design. This is more of a kind of an abstract Baroque, I guess. I guess we could call it that. Now, to emphasize those pieces, chocolate pieces a little bit more, I'm using just some of more of that green luster dust because I want to tie them into the flowers. And then I added some pink, a little bit of pink, and a little bit of pearl. Now, I did decide after I did this that it needed a little bit more, so I will show you what I did. But before I show you how I finished that off, I decided also that I wanted my ribbon roses to stand up a little bit on the top. So I'm just using some more of that extra wafer paper and I wet it down and I'm sticking it to some floral wire and then just stick it right to the back. It's amazing how this sticks to itself. Now you don't want it to be soaking wet because it can warp your flowers, just enough to get them to attach. And now I'm using a little bit of rose gold. I really was trying to keep away from adding a gold veining into this cake because I always do that. So instead, I am adding it just to the tips of the ribbon roses a little bit. Now it's going to bleed into the ribbon, uh, the uh, wafer paper a little bit, so just make sure you're not oversaturating it again. And then I'm using some of the dry rose gold edible the dust or petal dust, and I am just tapping it on. Clean, dry hands, guys. Clean, dry hands. Um, just touching the top parts of the pattern the most um, raised parts, kind of emphasize those a little bit. And then I did decide that wasn't enough yet either. So I end up going back in with my fan brush and using, here we go, the, um, the paint version that I used on those petals. It's just your luster dust with a little bit of Everclear. You can use vodka, you can use lemon extract, or you can use mineral spirits, I hear. That works too. And yeah, like I said, I'm just, emphasizing the raised parts of this pattern. I gotta get myself on the pad, a pad on the back. I did not add metallic veining. I personally really like that, that look better, but that's okay. I don't always have to do it. And then I'm just putting our ribbon roses on. Now if this is for an order, you might wanna put a straw in your cake and then put your ribbon, your your wire into the straw if that makes you feel more, you know, food safe about it, that is fine. And that one on the front, I just added a little buttercream on the back. Same with these on the very bottom. I like to add some to the bottom when I have some to the top, catty corner to kind of go with the flow. So I hope you liked it guys. And if you would, 
please like and subscribe and share. And if you have any questions, let me know. I love to answer questions as long as I can see it. I get a lot of questions, so I try to answer as many as I can. So if you give it a try, send me pictures on Instagram. I also like to see that. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.